Welcome to the Novia oh. podcast. Well, between the spokes. No, sorry, it's between the spokes. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Episode 13? 12, 13? 12, 13, 13? Something like that. Something like that? Yeah. It's a lot now. We should know that. Yeah. That's, that's all right. Too many to count. I can't count past 10. A lot of stuff going on. Yep. It's been busy. It's getting to be that time of year. Things are warming up. It is. Um, gearing up for a lot of uh, <laughs> events and stuff coming up. I actually had a nightmare the other day. Oh, yeah, this is funny. I, this, I forgot you told me to this. this. This day, is funny. still Ooh. stresses me Still out. haunts you. I literally woke up in a panic and, like, immediately went to the garage because it was, like, it was like a Sunday morning or something like that. Like, immediately yeah. went to the garage and, like, started working on the car. And then I was, like, it took me, like, a little bit to realize, like, that was a dream. Uh, but, yeah, I had an absolute nightmare that, uh, you know, me and you got an event coming up end of April. It's not and, really the uh, end of April. Well, yeah, it's towards in a couple the weeks. end of April. It's a couple weeks. Yeah. So either way, yeah, still stressed about it, but like it stressed me out more because I had this nightmare where like we showed up, or, like I showed up, like with the car as is, which isn't necessarily ready. But not only that, I didn't have any tools with me. I didn't have a helmet. Uh, I didn't have any spare tires or spare wheels. I just Great. literally drove the car. Drive. I'm like, yeah, I'm here. Um, That's what you want to do. At just a drift uh, event. yeah, like I don't know why like, why I dreamt that or why that messed me up so bad. But you know you're not going to do that now. I, I think that's what it was. It was like it did remind me of all the things I need to do though. Yeah, because that, that that hit that to the T. Even some things that like told me I need to do and I didn't write it down like an idiot. And then it, oh. that reminded me. So I think you were like invading my dream or something. That, ooh, dreaming. Like, <laughs> ooh, dream boy. <laughs> I don't know. Either way, I hated it. Stressed me out, but we're going to get the car done. So, I drove my 240 running. out of the garage. I saw that. It moved. It was cool. And that, like, there's nothing wrong with the engine. No, it's no. just like suspension stuff. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the front end's been tore apart like all winter. Yep. Uh, I need to do an alignment on it, and then the DMV needs to send me my license plate. Yeah. I mailed it. I got an envelope. <laughs> I'm so proud. <laughs> I had everything I needed, but I didn't have an envelope. Yeah. I was just like, I'm still waiting on the, the title bag. <clears throat> Hopefully nothing's weird. I'll be weird. I'll be weird. I'll be honest. It was kind of weird where I had to mail all of these super important documents in, like the originals. Yeah. And it's like, well, hope it makes it. I hope. Yeah, I hope it makes Let, it. I, that's, like, what I've happens if it doesn't? I know. I've had to do that for the RX-8 now because I bought the RX-8 in Illinois and then the 240 that I bought in Kansas. It's like, yeah, you have to physically mail the one and only title, Yeah. which is a real pain in the ass to get if you didn't know, if you lose it. Um, well, in. I had... I, lo- I lost it for my pickup truck when I sold it, well, and I got it in like two days. I'm just anything. Oh, that's do, an out-of-state title. Anything to do with yeah, anything to do with the DMV, I just automatically assume is a nightmare because it usually is. If you so, work at the DMV, we don't hate you. No, we just hate the process. Yeah, I know it's not your. We fault. We don't hate the player. We hate the game. I know you don't want to be there. Yeah. Well, okay. you might want to be there because it's your job. Well. <laughs> either way. Yeah. I'm uh, just waiting on the title back for, for that, and hopefully you get your license plates. I at least transfer that for S plates over, so I already got plates. But you're driving your car for the event, so it's like you need that. Are I, you not driving your car? Oh, no, you're taking the IS. Yeah, I'm taking the IS. Oh, I have some new knuckles. Right. I have a lot of work all of a sudden now to do on the <laughs> IS 300. So. Yeah, Rich from Easy Knuckles is like, hey, Dude, Rich is the man by the Rich. <laughs> You're, you're Good sick. Good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, no, he's like, no, you're going to run these. And you're like, all right. Yeah, so I got, so he sent me the knuckles, which I like super appreciate. Yeah, like, it still really cool. blows me away. Um, so I, I've got those, which it's actually funny. My The knuckles I have on there right now, so they're cutting well the knuckles from Heatmaker. Shout out Heatmaker. Those were great. Um, I have to replace the ball joints on those. Just, it's like an IS thing with yeah. ball joints kind of are a little iffy sometimes. Yeah. So just preventive maintenance, want to replace the ball joints for those. So I bought new knuckles and was going to press the ball joints out, press the new ones in. And then Rich was like, yo, you should try these out. I was like, sure, I'd love to. Sure. Sent them. So now I literally have ball joints. I have to cut the <laughs> tie rod pickup point off, and I'm good to go. Hell so yeah. it was super. So that will be pretty easy. And I think all I have to do, knuckles, alignment, fluid change. And then if it's warm enough, I kind of want to try painting the doors. Damn. Because I want to show up looking cool. Yeah. Because... Uh, like repaint the doors, or do you have new doors? I no, keep the doors. Keep just the doors, repaint but just them. repaint them. Yep. My phone's yeah, blowing up. What the? Oh god, you're, it must be nice to be popular. Yeah, just door talk, I guess. Yeah, you started doing videos on the FI and just oh, notifications. Yeah. Oh yeah. After the no, yeah, I got a, I got the sway bar end links. I got the skid plate. Hell yeah. Um, I said figure out a wheel situation. I got the Conos. Oh yeah. Um, oh, I got Conos too. Yeah, I just gotta see if they fit, honestly, and, and make sure nothing hits, and then. Uh, 
I should probably do that tonight. And then just make, I got to order tires, which. I don't know if my condoms are going to fit the IS300. If they don't, I'll. But they will fit my 240. They're going on one of the 17s. Yeah. Yeah, I got 17 by 9 plus 22s. So it's going to be. I got 18, 9 and a half plus 22s. Those will fit the 240 well. Yeah. It's just like the the offset just seems. With the 9 and a half, this is right now in the front, it's a 9 plus 15. So, in a sense, more aggressive, more backspacing free. And it's still, like, on the one side, hits the coil. Damn, that's. That's crazy. That's weird. You need like a little five mil spacer. Well, with the nine and a half plus twenty two, I might need like a freaking twenty mil spacer. That's true. Well, these are car guy problems. Yeah. <clears throat> you know what wouldn't maybe have these problems? A brand new car. A brand new car, which we're not giving you. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I'm not Oprah, but it is a topic for today. You know, a lot of stuff happened in the automotive world. Obviously, the last like five years or so. Yep. You know. You see a lot of cool cars out there. You know, it's like... Cool new cars. Cool new cars. So I think we've had this discussion kind of like off camera and just... I think it's yep. an internal discussion we have with ourselves a lot of times. Like, should I go get like a new car? Is like a new to, car to modify? Like, like enthusiast car. You <laughs> yeah. know, like, you know, something that you know you're going to modify. Yep. And, you know, is it worth it? Because there's a lot of factors that come into play when you do something like that say like you go get a brand new car like let's say you go get the brand new gr86 or maybe like the new gr corolla or the new z or something like that is it worth it right now to go do that or should we just stick with the things we know and love you know our old 90s cars or even just i mean hell even like 2013s the the first gen almost 20 years old so you know but yeah so this is I've never owned a brand new car. <laughs> Have you owned a brand new car? Uh, the closest I was to a brand new car was my FRS. Okay. Because even though I bought it in 2017 and it was a 2013 and it only had like 18,000 miles on it. So, so pretty much brand so, new. Yeah. So the, I, I haven't done it so like I don't have first hand experience, but typically like enthusiast cars being brand new were really expensive mm-hmm. like and, and compared to what you get in the used market so much so where it was like this is stupid because i want to modify it or there's nothing available for what i want like a f- for sale new right now like to me the and i don't want to send another conversation around this but the new like eight six that that's like like a lot i've seen a couple of friends that i drift with uh post their drift cars for sale to buy one of the new eight sixes and yep. some guys actually buying them because it's like, whoa, like, I, you know, I don't have to go crazy. You know, I, I'm not like doing a thousand horsepower yeah. drift car, but the, this is a great platform. It has a warranty. Yep. The, the parts from the previous generation fit on this one for the most part. I was yeah. some Which is stuff. nice. Yeah, w- super nice. I think uh, we said that before in a video, but like, thank you, yeah. Toyota and Subaru. Like, I, think, I think like the suspension setup's pretty much the same. Headers. Headers, actually you can make work, yeah. Um, Are the brakes the same? That I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. I think they upgraded the brakes a little bit. Okay. Um, but it, that, I mean, the, the big thing is like with a new car, like why would you want a new car? Well, you're the first owner to fuck with it. Yeah. So like there's not a lot of fuckery but before you. And like <laughs> look at your 240. Like Homer Simpson got his hands on that thing. Actually, there is a, um, oh, what the hell is the neighbor's name? Uh, the uh, neighbor in the Simpsons is the, the weird like Ned Flanders. Dude. Ned Flanders. Yeah, there's like a buff tatted Ned oh, yeah. Flanders like, decal yeah, that's like right. on the bash or the crash bar in the front. And you have, your, <laughs> you have the painted uh, pulleys. Remember? Yeah. That was really funny. All, yeah. your pulley, all gel's pulleys are painted. Yeah. Like, like, like one's like blood <laughs> splatter. Another one I think is like a tropical I, I thing. Like it was paint. really weird. Yeah. I hope it's paint. But, uh, okay, so no one has screwed with your car before. Yeah, you're the first one to touch it. Yeah, right? so like, like any everything mods, is from the factory. It, yeah. It's you. It's not like Oh yeah, I bought this car and I reverted it to stock, and I just did my, you know, hand tight on the yep. coilover nuts and stuff like that. So you're, you're the first one to get it. It has a warranty now. Yeah, probably. You might void that warranty. Probably instantly. Yeah. Most likely, but uh, like a powertrain warranty, sometimes that isn't as easily yeah, voided. Yeah, I, I I know there are some out there like. You can throw, like, obviously cosmetic stuff on there. You can throw a cap exhaust on there. You can throw, you know, some pieces on it. And it'll still be covered under, like, the powertrain. Yep. Warranty. So. Or, like, wheels, tires. Like, usually that's yeah. obviously yeah, they, no they problem. Yeah, they don't care about that. Yeah. The, uh, 
The, the other thing is like, it's, it's usually kind of exciting. So yeah. like, especially the new Supra, for instance, right, like when yeah. Dakota's got a new Supra, it's like that it's still kind of like, you don't see a whole lot of them no. around. It's like, oh, it's new, it's just yeah. cool. It's not like a Challenger or Charger where you yeah. like, there's a ton of them, like great cars, whatever. But like, it, you're different. Mm -hmm. uh, or like, say when the new Z comes out, it's like, whoa, like. Yeah, the first the time you Z. see one, you're yeah. like, damn. Who is that? Like, you know, like, what, where, where did that go? Like, you know, yeah, it, it's that shock factor of like, it's exciting. And, and it's like to know that like, there's not a lot of these out here yet. You're like, yep. well, the first ones to get one, you know, it's like people are on the lookout for them. Yeah. You know, it's like whenever it's you It's like a hype it. thing. Yeah, like, oh, it shit. really is, yeah. So like, and the reason I, I say that though, is because you, like, we modify our cars because we like them yep. to look cool. And sometimes you like that attention. Like some people I mean, do. Yeah, some we're gonna be honest. Like, yeah, yeah, like I love my bacon fenders. Like it stands out <laughs> in the IS three hundred. But like it, you, you kind of like that attention. And you could buy a new car like the Z and leave it bone stock, yep. and people are still gonna give you that same attention because it's like, whoa, like yeah. that's one of the new Z. Yeah. Like the, the, I know this is a car thing, but the new Bronco. I remember that was a huge thing and still is. Whenever I see a new Bronco, I'm like, damn. Not, I know, I'm still not the Bronco like, Sport. We're, I'm not nah, talking Bronco bitch Bronco. Sports, We're talking no. big the boy. actual Bronco. Yeah. I, I do the same thing. It's like every time I see him, I'm like, damn, where the hell? Like, that's cool. Yeah. Like, it's like, you know, have, just not used to seeing them. And it's like, it's you know, in my mind, it's like, those are hard to get. Those aren't out yet. Like, those yeah. are like, you know, there's a wait list. Like, MSRP is you know, like, it's like crazy. Rare to see one in a sense, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, I totally get that. I totally get that. So it, the, the other thing too, like when I was really diving hard into cars, there wasn't a lot of new stuff available yeah. that I really thought, like I'd even consider like, really it was like 350Zs. And I was like, damn, those are expensive. And for the record, I don't know who's buying 370Zs brand new right now, but like, <laughs> bro, yeah. like, Go buy a used one. Like, yeah. uh, holy crap, Nissan. Like, come on with something a little bit yeah, different so maybe, here. Yeah, maybe update the interior a little bit at least. Like, my God. I know. <laughs> it was so funny, actually. Like, no diss on Nissan. I think they're doing some really cool stuff, but it's just, and they make some great cars. But, like, we went to the Chicago Auto Show two years ago, a couple years ago. Um, and we went there, and, like, you know, there was, like, the new Type R. There yeah. was... Uh, um, Subaru was doing some stuff. I think it was like, you know, like the new Foresters or whatever. But like, there's a lot of like cool stuff going on. I think they had like the new Ford GT there. Yep. Like, really, really cool stuff going on. And it was like, and then there was like the Nissan section. And they had like the R35. Yeah. And then they had like this 370Z Nismo. And like, you, I, like, they were Dude, like, yeah. That's like a 40K car. Yeah. 40K, it's like, like really brand new. expensive. And it's like, it's like the truck I'll show you. You can open them up. You can, yeah. you can do whatever, look at them, sit in them. And I like sat in it. And I'm like, Oh my God! This feels like 2008. And I like, yeah, yeah, I like look over at everything else. I'm like, you know what's crazy? <gasps> you could sit in a 370Z for 40k and be like, damn, this is nuts. Or you could go buy an R32 GTR. <laughs> that too. Like, so like, yeah. it's, it's crazy. Yeah. But but I know that's not a new car, and we're, we're talking about new cars here. But uh, I used to go to the Detroit Auto Show every year. Mm -hmm. uh, it was kind of a thing I did through work uh, for us to like marketing ideas mm -hmm. and just kind of do cool stuff before I worked here. I should say that. Um, and I was there when they announced the Supra. Okay. So yeah. like the, the new Supra and I was like, damn, like this is crazy, yep. like super cool. But what blew me away more than the Supra, which this is gonna sound really weird, was the TRD Camry. Yes. I was like, yes, these look so cool. Yeah. And it had a two-tone factory paint job, yep. like quad tips. Like <laughs> I was like, damn, like this is really cool. And, uh, and then uh, Nissan, uh, they had cars there, like, it, it, but they had nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it, but it was like, I wouldn't even say like Nissan even had a booth when we went. It was just like, oh, here's a couple cars. The yeah. freaking Hyundai booth was cooler Hyundai, than that. Hyundai and Kia, like, we're talking about new cars. Yeah. Like, let's let's talk about new cars that we're kind of like into. Like, what what yeah. are we talking about? Um, I'm gonna start first because I was thinking about this this morning, and to me, it like the Z is yep. intriguing. The new eight six. Yep. The Stinger, I, yep. like as a new car I would goes, absolutely put that in there. Uh, this is a controversial one, but the Veloster N, I think. What about the Elantra N? Have you seen anything on that lately? Uh, I have no. seen more and more stuff on that recently. They made an Elantra N, and like I've been seeing Hold a lot on. of stuff. We're doing about a live it. Google search. Live here. Google search, but honestly, it's like I think it has potential. You know, it's I think it's like one of those cars. Like, oh God, what what could I compare that to? 
you know, in a sense, like, you know, like the TRD Camry, like it's a... How do you spell N in Elantra, N? I'm just kidding. Elantrin. <laughs> oh, all right. Sorry. Yeah. That was a very... <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, my problem with this car is the front. I have yeah. seen this car. Yeah. Hot damn, is that ugly. Like, <laughs> I just don't like the way, right, but like, you so just for a refresher, that's what. Yeah, no, I know. And it's like, but you know people are going to go buy that. Because it's like, it, yeah, it's those people, it's the same people that are out there buying the Camry TRD. Um, and what's the other one that was, like, out there for a while? But, you know, it's like the, like the Accord um, Sport and stuff yeah. like that, too. Like, people are like, oh, Like the two-door right. Accord? Two-door two -door Accord, that one? Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, you know, it's it's like that, that same demographic. It's like, it's yep. almost like, I know I need to be a little responsible, but this is kind of cool. I'm going to let my hair down a little like, bit. It's like, it's like the sport package, yeah. you know? It's like, it's a, you know, that demographic. It's which, sporty, son. Yeah. So I would throw that one in there, too. Yeah, the N series of Hyundai, absolutely. What else you got? Uh, I, I might get some flack from this. I absolutely adore the current generation Mustang. Like, no, I, like I the think, S550s? Yeah, S550s. Yeah, they're awesome. I hated them when they they're first came everywhere. out. everywhere. Dude. When I got my, I had uh, the, I had a 2005 GT, and I got that, and it was a, I think it's S197 is the chassis code for sure. those. It's an S chassis technically. Anyways, I was like, I love the retro boxy look. The new ones came out. And they're like, yeah, we're doing this because we can sell it in Europe. And I was like, oh, it's too rounded and like whatever. But I love the S550 Mustang. Honestly, they're super. My cool. favorite generation. I'm not gonna lie. I think they look really good. They look really cool. And. They pack a punch. Yeah. Like, and they sound crazy, um, especially, like, obviously, like you look at, like, the GT350s and stuff. But yep. it's, like, those are it. Those slap. They are really cool. I'm be real. I don't like the Camaro. I, no? I'm not. Not because okay. I don't like Chevy stuff. I just, I've rented a bunch of Camaros. They're, yeah, they're all V6 ones. Like, I don't know. But I oh, couldn't okay, see yeah. shit out of those. Really? Like, the visibility. See, I thought, like, the, so I, so we did a video a while back. I know this is getting way off topic, but who cares? It's a podcast. Um, we did a video a while back. And it was Kirk. He had his GT350R. And then we had Damn. the branded title ZL1. Okay, Nate's ZL1, that thing slaps. That, yeah. But so that's a like, ZL1. Okay, that's like, like here's the way up here. Yeah, I, know, I know, I know, I know. But it's like, I drove both, right? So, But, like, I had a harder time driving the GT350 because the front end felt so long. Yeah. Like, I felt so far back. And then I like got in the Camaro and it felt like a normal car. Yeah. Like obviously, yeah, you're like in there. It's, it's like stealth mode, but like, I felt like I wasn't about to like hit something in right. the front of me, you know. I plus it was like a lot more horsepower, supercharged. Dude, that car is insane. Thing was rowdy. <laughs> it's real fast. Um, I do. We're all right. We're Mustangs, Camaros. Uh, I will say that the new or the current like Challenger Charger situation. Yeah. I think those are cool cars. Dude, Challengers, they look so sinister yep. and mean. I don't ever, like, we were just talking about Nissan. I'm like, do something new. And I know you have this new Z coming out. And the Challenger's been, like, how it has been for yeah. a long time. I don't care. Like, it just looks dope. Yeah. You just keep giving it more power and more power <laughs> yeah, and more like, power. All right, 500 horse. Yeah. 700 horse. 800 uh, 800 horse. Yeah. And they're like, fuck it, 1,000 horse. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's getting crazy. I, I think those are cool. Um, Type I, R? Uh, yeah, the Type R is really cool. I, I will say that. WRX right now. They were. <laughs> yeah. And then I, they decided uh, to release dude, a new generation. The new WRX sucks. I, like, yeah, to I, be frank. It just looks bad. Yep. Uh, also, like the new SI. like Yeah, the, the biggest, the biggest uh, blows as far as like car stuff in 2022 has definitely been the new SI, the Integra. I... Um, and that the thing's WRX. gross. And the WRX. Yeah. Toyota's been freaking crushing. Dude, what do, you about, <laughs> what do you think about the new STI? Oh, the all-electric non-existent one that apparently they're making but not making? I don't know, dude. All right. It's I like, feel it's like, like it's, if it has <clears throat> square plastic fender arches, I don't want it. It, it looks terrible. It looks so bad. Yeah. I, were like, I think uh, there was a picture floating around. I don't know if it was Photoshopped or what, but they're like paint match like the fender flares and then like put it on like tees or something I'm yeah like, it still looks fucking awful yeah it's not it's not a good looking car at all um let's jump over to europe talk about any new european cars yeah. um i always like i don't know the new bmws are just i don't know i love the new m4 i i absolutely love those cars 
I just can't get past the front. That's, I mean, yeah, it's it's pretty obnoxious, it's, but it's like honestly, like after like seeing it, there was a couple of them at uh, Gatlinburg last year. Um, honestly, they're insanely cool. I really like them. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. That's fine. I mean, it's it's your own. It, I'll be really like weird. it. I'm not gonna say it's not an, a massively large grill in the front. Yeah, it's, it's weird, but it's grown on me. It really has. Um, I don't know if there's anything from Europe that's brand new that I'd really jump um, to get. Yeah, nothing that's like made you know headlines over here anyway. I, actually, <clears throat> this is like way out of like the realms of like possibility for pricing, but like the Taycan, that's cool. Yeah, that is pretty neat. That's a cool car. And yeah, the new. Um, the new Porsches and stuff, I think, yeah. have been... Obviously, Porsches been killing it. Yeah, they've been doing a really good job. Also, like, it seems like every influencer is like, I'm getting a GG3 yep. RS. Like, <laughs> For a while there, yeah, yeah. It was like everyone's like, yep, got one. Uh, that's on the way. Yep, got one. Oh, I bought two of them. Uh, yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the GT3 RS, like, was becoming, like, the YouTube influencer car for a while, I feel like. Yes. I mean, for good reason. They're amazing freaking cars. I remember we even did a video on one, um, which was super neat. It was that, like, electric green. Yeah. One that was really cool. But. They're they're super cool, but like I, I'll be real. Europe, I think you're gonna have to step it up a little bit because yeah? Japan's coming in strong, and the U.S. has got some That's really true. major That's contenders. True. Like, you can get like a Mustang GT at a pretty like competitive price point for like, for the power you get and the yeah. like performance and like what you get out of the box with a warranty. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, I mean I think that that debate will always be there of domestic Euro JDM KDM whatever. Um, I will say that the USDM, JDM, KDM, I think they've been really doing well. Yeah. The Euro stuff, I, it's expensive. Like, yeah, that is one thing that will always stay consistent is that it's stuff really, will be hella expensive. Like brand new. It depreciates. Yeah, like the depreciation smother. is yeah. what you've got to rely on. It's like, oh, dang, that uh, AMG that was 150K um, drove it 10,000 miles. I'll take 20K. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, literally. It's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. But, no, it's so bad. So there's a lot, there are, like, I just want to go through the exercise because there are a yeah. lot of new cars out there. Yep. And, and a lot you, of good options to choose from. Like, yeah. unfortunately, there's been some bad news of some not so great cars coming up, but there are a lot of good options out there. And even though they might not be brand new, even like, you know, like we look at like 2019s and stuff like that, yeah. like it's still considered new. Like, it, yeah, I mean, the uh, new car, we said you get a warranty with it, yep. and you know you get some peace of mind that no one else fiddled with it. Yeah, so you get the warranty, <clears throat> peace of mind that, like, if it's bone stock, you don't have to worry about anything like that. The reliability, yep. for the most part, is going to be there. Yep. You know, one thing for me, especially when I picked up the FRS, is like I don't have to deal with rust. My God, is rust the worst? Yeah. Not only because it just drives you nuts of like. God, that looks terrible, and it's literally cancer of cars. You can yep. never get rid of it, and it's like... So you, like, cut it apart. Yeah, unless you literally cut half the car apart and replace it. Um, but it just makes it such a pain in the ass to work on because yeah. you're terrified to lift it up. You're terrified to even take a, a socket or impact to anything because it's just going to shear. Yep. Like, you know, the stuff literally just falls apart in your hand. Yeah, you, you don't have that to worry about. But what you also don't have is heart. What do you mean? So when you buy a used car, like your 240 has a lot of character. That it does. I will give you that. Um, it, it. I don't know how to like really describe it, but like a new car, it. It's almost got like a personality to it. Yeah, that, like, exactly. And, and it's and it's left over from the previous owner or owners or. So your FRS was basically new. Did you like? Yeah. Did you feel like it has personality? Because when I as when I got to know you, I felt the car had one, but like it's because yeah. I knew it as Gels' car right. and it was like yeah. customized. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like when I good. when I got it, that car like, sounded so it, good, by the way. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. Like you know, you you do grow an attachment to these things. Like as enthusiasts, that's what we do. That's why it's like hard to let cars go, or if like yep. if something happens to it, like why you get emotionally upset. You are emotionally invest, invested into it as well as like monetary wise too. Yeah. And it's, you know, it becomes a part of you. We always talk about cars being an extension of you, of your personality. It's like, you know, 
the kind of person you are and, and who you want to be like that that is shown through you know not only what you do to the car but the quality of what you do to the car and just like yep. how you maintain it and everything like that like it is an extension how of your you personal. maintain it if you maintain that it. that's also a good point too yeah so like when i got it it was completely bone stock so yeah to me like when i got it it was like i really enjoy the car yeah. i'm obviously going to like take care of it like this is the first like new car that i've ever owned like up until then i just had my 98 eclipse and obviously that was entirely different Damn. That's from, a, I didn't realize it was that to it that. Was a I mean, big we've, gone, jump. we've talked yeah, about our cars. It was a huge Damn, jump. That's a really crazy jump. It was a really big jump. And it was like, I was so excited. And like, I, you know, did not a lot to that car, but. Did you want to customize it right away or were you yes. worried to like. It no, is I, was, I was ready to jump full board because okay. I finally had like that blank canvas. It was completely, you know, almost brand new. Like, like you didn't have to fix stuff right away on it, sort of no, thing? No, nope. It was. Com- nice. It was perfect it was like it was like a one owner lease car um they had like thirteen thousand miles on Did you buy it from a dealership yep oh cool yeah because it was funny because like uh where i was working at the time i would i would hop off uh to go like grab lunch and like where i'd have to drive by it was at the toyota dealership in green bay and they had it sitting like right up front oh and I'm, like, dude and it was like right at the time when i was like looking for i'm like all right i got like Big boy job. Yeah. I'm like, you know, I'm Big comfortable. Boy money. Yeah, we're like in a new city. You know, like we're settling in. It's like, I think, I think it's time. Yeah. You know, to start because it's like the eclipse was like it was at the end of its, you know, I was I was kind of done with it, and I was looking for that next like project. I was looking for like something new, um, and so I was like I was looking for things like, I really wanted like like an R spec Genesis coupe really bad. Honestly. Oh yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That's, so that's... I was like I was on the hunt for like a Genesis coupe. Um, I was keeping my eyes open. What, just out of curiosity, yeah. what made you want that over like a 350, 370Z? Um, the, like the boosted. Okay, the turbo. Yeah, yeah, it had like, had you get like the, it was either going to be like the, the 3.8 um, six cylinder. Yep. Or it was going to be, you know, the 2.0 turbo. Yep. But like I wanted to, you know, I wanted to have like the big brake package for sure. Yeah. It was one thing that I wanted. The I wanted to be, I think it has. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to be um, the manual and stuff. Um, so like, yeah, at the time, like, they were kind of hard to find around here unless yep. you were, like, really traveling. I'm like, I don't really want to travel right now. It's like, yeah. I'm like, I'll wait if something pops up. But, like, I kept driving by this freaking FRS every damn day. Dude, and I'm like, I know that. All feeling. right. Like, I'll stop in. Like, just, I literally, just like, look. I'll literally just told look. myself, I'm like, all right, I'll do it. I'll stop in, like, talking to somebody. Yeah. I, like, pulled in and. I'm like, why has this been sitting out here for this long? You know, Cause like, because if you like, see it every day, you're just like, there's something wrong. Yeah, with that's it. what like, I'm like. I literally crazy. walked out. I'm like, Yo, could, what's could the... you see the price from? Like, did you know what it was priced at when you before you went to go look at it? Yeah, because I what I first did is I looked it up on on the computer. Oh, okay. Um, or no, no, I didn't. I I just stopped. You in. had no idea. No, so I stopped okay. in and I'm like, yeah, what's the what's the deal with the the orange yeah, FRS the out there? You know, I was like, you know, at least I like was working a job where I like had to dress up a little bit, so it wasn't totally weird with like some twenty-two-year-old dude walking in, like, "Hey, what's a sports car out there?" You know, but they're like, "Oh yeah, we uh, took it in on trade. It was a one-owner lease. He he ended up, you know, he had it for a lease, and then he when he you know brought it back in, he actually bought like the the GT eighty-six, so like the to, the Toyota eight-six, like yeah. with the updated front end facelift yep. um, and stuff like that." And I was like, okay, well, it's obviously someone who liked He cars. clearly liked it. Yeah. He, yeah. He likes cars. And I was like, well, how many miles are on it? And I'm like, it's auto or manual. Like, oh, it's manual, which we can't sell it. We're like, no one wants it, wants it in manual. Dude, I was does like, that hurt your soul? And I was like, at, at that point, I was like, oh, I got this shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, I'm I like, got you. I'm like, oh. Oh, you uh, you fucked up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, it's a manual. Like, yeah. damn, like, we can't sell yeah. it. And, and they're like, like, yeah, it's got low miles on it. It's manual and it's bright orange. No one wants a bright orange manual car. Very few people want that. I was like, it's like a, oh, okay. They're like, well, you want to take it for a drive? And I'm like, yeah, we could hop in. I'm like, just don't want to grab it. I don't know. Here's the keys. I was like, sick. I went, like, it's got like yeah. two torque. You can't yeah, do anything. Yeah, I went and ripped that thing around. Is obviously like, I think it was like literally 18,000 miles yeah. when I got it. Um, I was like, all right, I'm sold. Obviously, hopping in from a 98 Eclipse to a 2013, very, you know, solid car yeah. you know rear wheel drive yeah you know everything's updated got nice seats in it you oh know. yeah i was sold i'm like i'm taking this seaters, didn't it nope i didn't nope did it, those that, come with seat and, heaters nope. it was a very oh. very basic interior which was another thing that i really liked i'm like i don't need they any. age better yeah like a basic interior yep. <laughs> okay 
Uh, sorry, we got to go over to Europe real quick. <laughs> uh, any European car, they're always like, oh, we got this tech. Yep. That tech is always like a cutting edge. Yeah. And in a couple of years, it's bad. Like yeah. the, the GPS yep. nav screens. That's like two frames per oh second. Oh my God, yeah. yeah. So anyways, yeah, so basic interior. Yeah, like so I was, I was sold. I was like, this is what I want. I didn't yeah. want anything crazy. Like, you know, I was sold. So I, I picked up the car. But yeah, no, like it was... It was really funny too because I, I joined like all the Facebook great like pages and stuff right away and actually the guy was on the page and he was like, Yo, that's so my old car. car. Yeah. And I was like, sick. He's like, Yeah, I never drove it during winter. And I was like, dope. Whoa. Like so this thing was completely spotless. Did you drive it through winter? No. I it was stored literally from you know, before the first snowfall till after the first rain yeah. of the spring when all the roads were clear. I mean the thing's spotless. Yeah. And then, you know, I ended up selling it. But yeah, no, I knew right away that I wanted the modified. I was like, I was so excited. It had a very clean car. It was gonna be easy to work on. Uh, blank canvas. You went from polar. I just realized. Yeah. Like, this is a very interesting. That's why that car meant so. It did yeah, mean a lot to me. You did have a brand new car, yeah. basically, to um, a very well loved car. Yeah. So so yeah, you know, when I got it, it was like it meant it meant something to me, yeah. but like it was basic. It had no was personality. There's a point in your life it. where like that's a it like. And this might sound kind of dumb, but like you get that job out of school, or yep. like if you didn't go to college, like you get your first like job where you feel like a you've really made it, yep. and like you, I don't feel like you don't have the need, but you're like I can actually buy some of these things I never thought I could. Yeah, and I was like, it's it's a was, big it was so deal. funny because I was like, come on, I'm like, how the hell do I apply for a loan? I'm like, how nobody do, tells you these things. How like, do I do like <clears throat> I have to like go to the credit union back home? Yeah. Um, no, I just do it online. Okay, I, I just they take care. of I'm like, okay, okay. Yeah. And I'm like trying not to like spoil, you know, I was getting like a new car yeah. and stuff like that. So no, it was a really exciting time. But yeah, like I said, right out the gate, I knew I wanted to modify it. And over the four or five years of ownership, I did. I, I made it my own. And yeah, I would say you know, by the time I was ready to sell it, it, even everyone's like, why the hell are you selling? I'm like, I'm just ready for something new. Yeah. You know, and it was like, it was hard to let it go. But like, I know the, the, the new owner of it, he was so stoked about oh, yeah, it. it and like it's like, he already threw like his, he had like a carbon hood ready to go for oh, it. And I was right, like, yeah. Damn, wish I did that because that looks fucking sick. He like sent me a picture of it, and you know, yeah, it 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 they do develop a personality. But the, like, they develop personality. But you, I think, because I remember sitting next to you, you're like, ah, should I turbo it? And I'm like, whoa, like this yeah. is getting to be like the point of no return. Certain yeah. modification, and that's, like, and that's kind of where I was at. It's like with that car specifically, that yeah. platform. It's like I really felt like it did everything I could to it because I didn't yeah. want to wide body it. I didn't want to ruin like the reliability aspect of it either because yep. it was like one of those cars where it's like I can hop in this thing and go wherever I need and it's a fun car. Yeah. It looks good. I don't have to worry about reliability and it's like, okay, well, if I wide body it, it kind of, you know, there's only so many people that are going to buy a wide bodied car. And I'm like, I, I don't, I didn't necessarily like want to do that anyway. There's a lot of work to that. And then it was like, okay, well, if I want more power, you either have to like swap it or boost it and it's like, that's a lot of work. It, it's it's really hit or miss, and it's yeah. like and that, and then it's like okay, you're full in. Like that's another like five years of ownership of this yep. car, and I, it was at that it was at that crossroads of like I'm gonna let it go, I'm gonna try something different, and then you know, oh, you went to a NA240, you know, that's missing body panels and all that kind of stuff. I'm like yeah, but the reason is different. I've seen one body panel. Yeah, that's the bumper. <laughs> But but yeah, the reason is different. It was it's new experiences, right? It wasn't oh, necessary. Yeah. The FRS was a new experience in the sense of it's a new car. I, I I had that, and then it's like I went and got the daily, which is the the E90, which yeah I'm gonna do stuff to that as well. Yeah. But you know it's like I I wanted to experience like some motorsport sides of things, and that's why I went and bought the 240. Yeah, and like the for the new car side of things, yeah. like yeah, no. let's get back to the, the like, topic. well. I, I think like you have a, a good like story arc, and yeah. that's kind of how like. Like you have not a new car, and you realize like with your Eclipse, it's like, man, I don't want to deal with this stuff. It'd be nice to have something new. Yeah. Um, truthfully, it's I'm kind of like at when that it, point. I don't know if you've ever ran into this issue or not issue, but it's like when you get to a point with like your computer and there's just like files everywhere. Dude, you're know, like, yeah. man, it'd just be super nice if I could just like buy a new one. Just and just it's start so fresh. Clean. Or it's like, damn, the hard drive crashed. Oh well, like yeah, the, all those photos and stuff are gone, but. I get to start new. Or it's like just a little canvas. slow. The frame rate isn't yeah. quite what you want. Yep. It's like, this would be nice. Yeah. So when it comes down to like looking at new cars, is it worth it to go buy one and modify it? Absolutely. I mean, why wouldn't you want to make it your own? That's what we do. Yeah. There's some really good new cars out there. It's just like, 
you run into some other things. The number one thing, you know, I guess you could list as a con of going out buying a new car to modify. Parts are going to be more expensive, right? Or, or hard to find. Or like hard to find. The aftermarket yeah. might not be there, yeah. which makes them more expensive or hard to find. Yeah, because it's like, instead of like 10 options for, you know, an exhaust, yep. there's one or two. Like and the new Z from, is going to be yeah. a, a good example yep. of that. And it's like, you know, those parts, and you know, Dakota ran into that with the Supra. Oh, that's a good he's point, like, yeah. He's like, right. yeah, I wanted to buy, you know, the HKS intake, and it was like $700 for an intake this big. That's crazy. And then, like, the exhaust was like two grand. And then the downpipe was like, you know, it just yeah. adds up super, super fast. And it's like, you know, for five grand that you stick into that, that could have turbocharged my FRS. Right. Or, yeah. you know, built the hell out of my 428 and my Eclipse. Like, yep. you, know, you know, it's that kind of mentality where it's like, if that really comes down to what are you looking to do? Are you looking to have reliability, look good, new platform, blank canvas to start from, or just, you know, a newer platform? Yeah. Or are you looking to just, you know, get the most for your money? Yeah. And if you're looking to get the most for your money, probably not going to be a new platform. If you're also not mechanically inclined, the new car is the better way to go. Yeah. Because it, like... A lot we, of stuff is just bolt on, like... Yeah, exactly. So like, the horsepower that new cars have right oh, now, yeah. holy moly, like... And, like, what you can unlock for, literally, a an tune? exhaust and intake and a tune. Look at, like, Dakota again. Yeah. Like, his Supra with a tune. I have it... Dakota, I still haven't ridden in your Supra. That's Before really the tune? Nope. After the tune? No. Nope. You got to get a ride in that thing. Yeah, but it's I fun. love it. I love that car. It's super, super, yeah. super cool. Whenever someone's like, oh, I don't know if new cars are worth it. I always look at like Dakota Supra. I'm like, man, that thing's pretty freaking cool. It's like, yeah, you're not going to be able to do everything that you want to do right away. And it was even kind of that with the FRS. It was yeah. like, I want to buy good parts. Cause like I'd feel bad throwing shitty parts on this really nice car. Yep. And it's like, so yeah, you're not gonna go buy everything right out of the gate because parts are more expensive. They are. And it's like if you want to get the good stuff, because you're also buying so new like, parts. It's yeah, hard so to buy anything like, used. Yeah. So I bought like the Tomei header. I bought the Greddy exhaust. Like, yeah. I bought name brand coilovers. I decided to just make my own wheels. Um, you know, but they, made a whole, you know, I whole, bought. You know, Joe's like, made a wheel company. He didn't just like <laughs> oh, I got metal. I'm gonna make. It. Yeah. So it's like. It's like, yeah, it, it took years to do that. I mean, I'm like, man, you didn't really modify that thing a whole lot. I'm like, well, I mean, that's what I could afford. But also, like, you don't have to go crazy with mods. Like, yeah. I, I think as enthusiasts, we're like, oh, you got to do this, this, this. Sometimes, like, it's some simple things that just make the car yeah, a little better. Yeah, because I could have just went and spent the same amount of money and did a bunch of shitty stuff to it. And then people were like, damn, that thing clapped. You didn't, you yeah. cheaped out. And it's like. Well, you, you either one or the other, you know? Like, it's, you I can't just pull you, money out of my you hands. You could have done some sad boy stuff on there. Oh, God, no, I'm not doing that. Dude, the sad boy movement, I think, is starting to, like, I think so, too. Die out. I think they got memed too hard. Yeah. <laughs> they are happy now. <laughs> Breaking news, they sad boys into happiness. are being happy. They're bullied into happiness. Yeah, happy boy club. <laughs> boy. There's going to be a bunch of smiley faces and, like, Dude, happy oh, boy God. is going to be a new, oh. I don't know. Dude, let's I start it. We could be the happy boys. I, I, no. <laughs> But uh, I think a new car is worth it. Like, is it expensive? Yeah, yeah of course it's, it's more expensive. But like, it is a hundred percent worth it. And there's just some cars that uh, buying used just isn't the the greatest option. And yeah. that those are usually the some of the really expensive cars. Yeah, where it's like you want a new one because if someone didn't drive it, seals are bad and all all that stuff. What What do you mean seals? Like any particular kind of seal. Um, Sam? I'm thinking of like. <laughs> uh, Put that away. Triangles. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what you're doing. Okay. Like, yeah. Like if you if you want something reliable. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Get a compression test if you're buying a rotary car. All right. That's yeah, all I have work, to say. There's work you have to do w with that. Yeah. No. It's that is true, and it's a good point to bring up. That's another thing you don't have to do when, when you're buying like, new is like a compression test. Well, checking you, for rust. I, I don't know. I've been seeing some STIs with not so good things, but oh wait, but they're not brand new. Well, they're new enough because they don't make a new STI. They're new enough. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's a good point to bring up. It's like yes, with older cars, there's obviously a lot of things that, that could be hidden, could be wrong. Certain platforms, rotaries. Boxers, boxer, yeah. um, that are have known issues. Obviously, going to start rearing their ugly heads. Ran into that with my Outback. Obviously, not something I was modifying, but I just wanted a nice daily. Do that video when you're like, I yeah. found it. That sound is <laughs> insane. Yeah, try hearing that at like 4K RPM at going 60 miles an hour on the highway when I let go. That was sick. 
Oh, that was awesome. That was great. So well, yeah, yeah. And to wrap it up nicely, as everything kind of is, it's up to you and the route that you want to go. Just know that if you're going to go, you know, the route of I love the older cars, I love my 90s JDM or my early 2000s Euro, like up front, the cost is going to be, well, I guess with JDM, it's kind of all over the place. But like, you know, up front, buying older cars, like the upfront cost is going to be a little less. Yes. Your, your parts are going to be sometimes a little cheaper, but you're going to have to deal with things like maintenance. You're going to have to deal with things like, you know, body work, rust, yep. um, you know, just past modifications, yep. um, figuring out what the hell the previous owner did, like, you know, that kind of stuff, reliability, you know, higher mileage, new cars. You don't have to worry about a lot of that really, really bad stuff, no. but you're going to be spending more money up front. Parts are going to be a little more expensive. Like it's going to take longer in a sense to build, like to get those good parts. But you get peace of mind. But you get that's, a lot of peace of mind. That's, so it's that's like the thing of like anyone who's modified a car. And so it's like, well, this doesn't fail. And <laughs> yeah. It, it's kind of tough where it's like, you just know it's going to work. Yeah. Unless it's a Subaru. Right? Yeah. So at the end of the day, the decision is yours. Well, this but was an interesting one. you are one. loaded up with information now. Yeah, so. you have all the information to make the right decision for you. Yeah. This is a, lo this is a good one. I like this one. I mean, because it's like, it really does hit home to me because it's like, I feel like every four years or so, I get hit with that decision. It's like, okay, yeah. you know, do I want something newer or do I want to go after something that I've always wanted that's a little bit older? And it's like, you know, okay, well, what does that look like? And yeah, it's, it is a tough decision to make. And, and it, there's a lot of factors that go into it, but that's where I'm going to be in the fall. Like, yeah, I know I, you've been looking for something as, and it's like, as if I can make it through the drip season, <laughs> any major catastrophes, <laughs> I would like something new hey, or fingers crossed for a good season this year for both of us. Yes. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Oh, cool. Well, this was fun. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for watching, listening, tuning in. Don't forget if you're looking for some wheels, tires or suspension. Hit up Anovia Wheels. For your new or used car. We have Fours wheels. Yeah, like this know, bad boy. Which is, this is our uh, three piece kinetic floating spoke we design. We just got this in this week. I absolutely love this wheel I think so this, much. I'm not going to say it's my favorite because I still think I like your Titans more. But yeah, but that's up there. Yeah. That's a close second. I'm not yeah. going to lie. It looks better than the carrier on someone else's car. Just gonna it say was really it. funny because I got my Titans and I went and showed Alex. He's like, dude, he was so he was jealous. So jealous. He's like, so jealous. Damn, I should have went with that. I'm like, yeah, that's what you get. Because Alex designed the Titan. I designed the carrier. He placed his order first. And I was like, well, can I get the carrier? He's like, no, you have to get something different because I have the carriers. I'm like, I designed the fucking wheel. Yeah, it's <laughs> he's my like, wheel. And he's like, ah, too bad. And I'm like, fine, I'm going to take your wheel and I'm going to make it look even better than my wheel. And then he's like, oh, shit, I should have went with my wheel. I was like, well, that's what you get. But anyway, you go <laughs> fill out a quote for those over to Nobi Wheels. And of course, don't forget to follow us on our socials. We got a lot of cool stuff coming out, we do. With like Mike Power. Uh, we're going to start driving this well, again this uh, summer. Uh, not the next podcast, but I think the one after that, we'll be getting ready for that first event. Yeah. And the one after that, we'll talk and then, about. Uh, we'll see how many. Uh, how it know. went for gels. And you know what? We should we could, we could grab Anna too. Yeah. And we'll be like, how was your first drift event for both yeah. of you guys? Absolutely. That'd be super fun. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, I'm Sam. I'm Jess. See you guys. Bye.